Hey everybody, my name is Ray Barchenner, and today I'm going to go over a quick workflow with Jellyfish, Kino, and Resolve. Here at LumaForge, uh, we have a new series called Powered by Jellyfish, and when we shoot with the Pocket 6Ks, we tend to edit and resolve. And today, my hope is to give you a quick overview of Kino and how you can uh, use you know, Kino's power to actually speed up your workflow in Resolve. So here we are in our case studies share on the Jellyfish and I've drilled down into the LAUSD project. Uh, and here's all of our footage. So what I'm gonna look for is up here on the right, I'm gonna type in .braw because I'm looking for my B-raw footage. And this is something cool that Kino has done recently where I'm able to play back Blackmagic RAW files directly from uh, Kino. So I'm able to play this clip back and this was shot at 60p. It's playing back real time uh, off of the jellyfish. We typically shoot 60p to slow down and post. So what I'm able to do now in Kino is go in here and actually choose the desired frame rate that I want to play back at. And I can go in here and it will actually play back at the frame rate that my project will be set to so I could see exactly what I'm working with, which is really, really cool. On top of that, I'm actually able to add LUTs. So if I go in here and, you know, if I have a favorite LUT that I want to use, I can actually apply that LUT and it will still, it will play back with the LUT that I will probably use in the show itself, which is really, really cool. Uh, on the right, you can actually add metadata description. So if I add, you know, lev walking, uh, I'll give it, you know, four stars. I can add tags so I can just say, you know, 60p, uh, I'll add uh, LAUSD and I'll add uh, shoes, whatever you want to add. So I can actually set in and out points here. So I'll just go into the timeline. I'm going to play it till I like it right there is great. There's my endpoint, and we'll go out to here. First step on the steps there out. And now I can actually take that and create markers from the selection that I just did, or I can do a subclip. So for me, I usually like to do subclips. So here's my subclip will be intro, lev, walking, description can be uh, lev walking into class. Uh, and it gives you the start time and the duration of it. So you know that that's a two second and 41 frame clip. So there's that. So now I've got my um, Subclip there. I can also take this and if I'm like, you know what, I also want that, make that a marker. So here's my marker from selection. We'll name Lev walking into glass. So there's that. I've done that. That being said, we could take this clip right now and send it to um, DaVinci Resolve. So I'm in here. I'm going to specify a bin that I want to put it in. So I'll just say LAUSD B raw. And I'll say OK. Uh, it's going to launch uh, DaVinci Resolve 16. So let's say we just did that clip. Uh, and then now I want to go back and I actually want to tag all of these uh, as Blackmagic Raw. I can select all of it and I can actually do edit multiple. And I can go in here in a description and type B Raw. Under the tag, I can say B Raw as well. Say OK. Uh, now that I have this, you know, let's say I've gone in and tagged everything. Uh, I can right click this guy and say send to DaVinci Resolve. Um, so I'll put it back in that bin that we created and we'll say OK. And I'm going to import the media. So now all the clips are in there. So now that the, the media is in, I can go to my edit tab and I can start pulling clips into it. But what I want to do is in the search parameters, I can go in here and change this to all fields and type in things like lev, or I can type in, you know, uh, 60p and it'll show me the clips that have those tags in them. So now I can just drop that into the timeline and I'm able to go in and do my edit, um, you know, as well as whatever I need to do. And this was the, you know, sub clip of the actual clip, which is right here. Um, so, and as you can see, the sub clip is on the left here, and this is the actual full clip. And then we also have our um, markers set in that clip. 
So, you know, there's a bunch of ways you can use it, but for our purposes, we, I usually typically go in and do those sub clips. It helps me work faster and I can actually just import all the sub clips into its own bin and start working from that. As producers or myself or whoever my assistant is at the time, they can go through and make those sub clips for me. So as an editor, I can just speed through it and, and crank out those edits. I hope this was helpful. Uh, Kino has definitely done some good stuff here in 1.8 and I'm looking forward to testing more. Have a wonderful day.